Welcome back to I Am Zags on GeoTV. Gonzaga Intramurals is number two in the nation. And to help you understand a little bit more what it takes to get there, here joining me is Shelly Radke and Jack McGrew. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's really a pleasure learning about everything intramurals. So first, I actually heard you, Shelly, talking to Jack before about this nickname, Grandpa. Where, <laughs> where does this come from? Well, he has a very, gosh, how do I say this? A very uh, unique trot kind of grandpa-esque. That's kind of where we got that from, so. I don't move too well, so <laughs> freshman year she saw me refing out there and it just kind of stuck and it's been a term of endearment that I've kind of carried with me through my, uh, my three years. That, that is awesome <laughs> and it gives you a bit of a sage aspect to yourself, like you're wise. And that might have been an aspect for, I heard you are also, because Dan's the executive producer of our show, I know, is obviously one of your employees as well, but was that a motivation for you becoming a supervisor as well, transitioning to that step? I think that was definitely a motivation. Also just seeing with uh, upperclassmen, specifically Aaron Schramm and some people who have already graduated, seeing the leadership that they were able to bring to the table was a big factor in me wanting to be a part of that. So once I saw really what people could do for the younger refs and help push our program forward, I think that's what really pushed me to do that. And going on to you, Shelly, as far as you've been here for a while, you're a veteran here, I, s I was lucky enough to sit down with uh, Jose mm -hmm. and talk about the process of getting the shirt. What was the um, transition from coming from a plaque to a trophy to the shirt? I'd love to hear the conversation at that table, just a little bit more in depth. I think just back in the day, it was just everything was a trophy. And we were like, well, we want something to be unique. Like Jose said, marketing, um, they can take it with them, kind of be proud you know, of where they went to undergrad and just kind of rep the shirt was kind of just the basic idea on that. Did you get the motivation from the shirt from another school maybe? Or I heard him talk a lot about Bloomsday as well. Was that any motivation in that as well? Uh, mostly other schools. Um, everybody has a shirt. They have different ways of doing it. Some just kind of mass produce where you get the same shirt basically for every sport. And we wanted to do something unique. We wanted to make it sport specific and so if you won football you're repping your football shirt not just hey i won a gonzaga intramural shirt absolutely there's nothing sweeter than walking around campus showing your buds <laughs> that you're number one basically and speaking of number one or number two very close to number one we've talked a lot about why we're number two but um where do we go from here since we're already so high how do we become number one what are the steps we take i think the biggest is social media um, I think we've made huge strides in the past couple years and right now we're only going forward in that. And I think just getting the word out even more and just getting, like Tyler said, every, everybody to participate is our goal. Absolutely, absolutely. And how has your development been with the team, Jack? I know I asked you about your development becoming a supervisor and you want to be, obviously it's been a great experience. Can you touch a bit about your favorite memory or dipping your toes in how it was initially being a ref? I would say my favorite memory is really just being able to uh, meet with the supervisors every week. It's, it's really awesome to be able to sit down and kind of see what was behind the door maybe my freshman and sophomore year when I was just a ref. And it really does go to show all the planning that Shelly, Jose, and Tyler do to get the intramural program ready. And I think that's just my favorite part so far, is being able to see what, what goes on to make this program really special. Absolutely. And w speaking of what, what's going on and where we can go again, what is the goal you guys, you can speak to this, Jack, as well as Shelly, uh, what do you think the goal for an intramural program is, the ultimate goal, as far as where we're going? Um, just, I think just expanding and getting, I think right now, non-traditional sports is where we should be going in that direction. And a lot of those don't take a lot of court space, a lot of field space, a lot of time. Um, students right now, they don't want, they want to be a part of it, but the 30-minute sport is super popular right now. So. I think just going in that and expanding off of some more non-traditional, like we added spike ball and we've got fall and spring lawn games now. So with like kind of the bocce ball or, you know, ladder golf, bago. So any ideas, Jack? I agree. I think alternative sports is really the way we're going to boost our participation. The one that I've brought up in meetings before and I, I'm going to push for in the next you know year or so that I'm here is for a schoolyard sports tournament. So that could include kickball, dodgeball, capture the flag, wiffle ball, things like that to really bring kids back to what they used to play when they were younger, uh, when everyone played at lunch. So I think that would be a really awesome way to get 
as many people as we could involved and push that participation number up a little bit. I mean, we're at 32. Why not keep adding, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <why> not? <laughs> and what, another one I'd love to see is handball, too, if that was ever a uh, ported discussion, too. I, it's super fun to watch, super exciting. So where, I guess, c going off that as well, sports and everything, what are more of the behind the scenes kind of things that go into intramural planning? It's what is the vision each year? Is it different? Is it similar? Is it? I think the approach is relatively similar. Every year it's like, okay, how can we plan this out where not too many are overlapping with the others? So if you want to play football and volleyball, you can make that happen within your schedule. Um, and usually the schedule's done for the upcoming year in May. So it, it takes a lot of prep work. Um, obviously we don't know the basketball schedule and so it's kind of hard to schedule around that but a lot of the university events we're aware of those and we do our best just to give the student as much um, I guess opportunity as possible if they're you know taking part in clubs or if they want to you know be a part of an event in intramurals you want them to be a part of everything so absolutely is there any obstacle that personally stands out for you in this process over the years that you've been at Gonzaga not really. It's kind of a, a fun process, you know, just learning from the year before, you know, hey, let's not have games on this night. That didn't work, you know, or hey, let's add some games on this night. It was a pretty open, you know, evening for us. We should have scheduled some more games. So, yeah, just being a part of that whole process and maybe getting us maybe more GUTV coverage as far <laughs> as getting us out there and filming intramurals. I mean, Spoke, we were talking about before social media, Dana and I, like getting the word out there would be huge. I know on campus we have over, I believe, 60% upwards of that participation rate. Why not get more people involved and clicking on liking on Facebook and Snapchat would be a great opportunity. So maybe. Absolutely. You guys are more than welcome anytime. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to come out there and uh, film for you guys too. That would be fantastic. And then I guess as well, maybe your favorite memory as well. Oh, goodness. Uh, Shelly, let's uh, go back to the archives. Um, <laughs> one of my first couple years, so about 10 years ago, um, we had our first female flag football official. And um, she grew up, her dad was a high school football coach, been around football all her life. All the guys were kind of like, I, I can't believe you got a female refing men's competitive. And she hustled, she made the right calls. And in the championship game, she was sprinting down um, the sideline. And it was a deep bomb, and she tripped. And from the ground, she kind of threw her hands up for the touchdown. And ever since then, the guys just respected her. And it was just really awesome to see kind of a female stepping into that role in a more male-dominated sport as Absolute. football. So. And you've done amazing here. I mean, so much is credited to you. Jose was saying, I was trying to give him credit about how, oh, you did so much with the shirt. And you did a great job as well being at that <laughs> table. I really appreciate you guys sitting down with me today. That's all the time we have, unfortunately. Thank you so much, Thank Shelley. You. Really appreciate Thank it, Jack. Much. Pleasure. Well, that's all the time that we have today. Back to DMC. What an amazing experience to be part of such an incredible family. If you'd like a look into our own GUTV family, we're hosting a Christmas special that you can be a part of on December 8th, following the Ask Professor Dan Answer Show. This will be our last show of the season, so make sure to tune in. That's all from us. Have a great night, and go Zags.